the Dara Dagian. Right, straight off the bottom shelf cheapies here. Uh, what I've got is a square bullet strat from 2012. Because uh, back then I had to go and spend a month working in Australia, I did five weeks working in Australia, and I didn't take a guitar with me. And after I've been there about three days, I uh, kept looking out the window of my the pokey service department and seeing a music store right across the road and I was getting really bored of going out every night and uh, basically sitting in a pub and eating something and having a couple of beers and killing time like that. Well, this isn't a healthy way to spend five weeks. So I went across the road and said, okay, it's the cheapest guitar you've got. And they pulled out some absolutely unplayable acoustic crap. Uh, all right, cheapest electric you've got. And they pulled out some absolutely unplayable sort of hundred Aussie dollar well, generic strap copy. All right, second cheapest electric you've got. And they pulled out this. And I picked it up, plugged it into an amp, and uh, and it sort of sounded like this. <laughs> And the bloke in the shop said, yep, sounds like a Strat. I said, yeah, well, it sounds like a second order approximation of a Strat. How much is that? 156 Aussie dollars. All right, fair enough, I'll take it. And uh, I bought a thing, walked across the road. Uh, and they gave me a cardboard box to put it in. Oh, they, it was in a couple of plastic bags, I can't remember. It certainly didn't come with a bag. Um, after I got back, I realised they hadn't given me a whammy bar. So I went back across the road and said, hey, there wasn't a whammy bar with this. I don't oh, know, we'll go in the back and see if we can find you one. You know, half the time they forget to put the bloody things in when they send them to us anyway. So we found me one that fitted and had the right end on it. Had a right, right colour end on it. And I spent the rest of my time in Australia playing this through uh, the magnificent rig of uh, an iRig, an iPad, and a little extension speaker that I could sit an iPod on that had a line in. So that was my guitar amp for for a month. And when I got in the office the next day and said, yeah, you never guess what I went out and bought last night. I said, oh. What's that? Oh, I went and bought the guitar because I haven't brought one with me. And one of the guys I was working with said, well, I've got five at home. Why didn't you just say you wanted to borrow one? Oh, fuck it. Well, anyhow, there I was in Australia with uh, a surplus guitar. And I got to the end of my stint there. I thought, right, well, I'll, I'll take it home in the time-honoured fashion. Unfortunately, I'd got my Swiss Army knife with me, with a <laughs> with a crosshead screwdriver on it, and I popped the neck off and stuffed it in my luggage, and then went out and bought myself a little cheap rock sack that I could use as hand luggage to fit the clothes in that no longer fitted in my case because my guitar was in there. So that's how I ended up with 156 Aussie dollar square bullet strat. <laughs> And as you can imagine, with all the other guitars I've got, this has only been played about twice since I got back from Australia that time. I very nearly donated it to a pub that had a jam scene for it as a house guitar, but decided better of it. Which was a pretty good decision because the place shut about, <laughs> about three months later. <coughs> Uh, these things are made in Indonesia by the miracle of CNC. We've got a probably a basewood body, it's skinnier than an ordinary strap body by about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch or so. Uh, light as a feather. Matte finished maple neck. Was it even an unfinished maple neck? Who can tell? This pri price point, it could be anything. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I got this wrong. Made in China, this thing. I can see it's got the got the typical typical big cheap tuners on the back. Uh, a really fragile finish. I mean, even though it's it's never actually been played out of the house, it's even picked up a couple of dings just from ordinary handling. You got three single coil pickups with staggered pole pieces. They're very low output. Five way selector, which is one of the nasty cheap ones with the the long sticking out neck on it. Anybody who's played these things will know what I mean. Standard strap compliment. 
However, in terms of beginner's instruments, when you compare this to the utter unplayable pieces of crap we used to have to struggle with in the 70s, this is, by comparison, an absolutely fantastic instrument. I would have given my eye teeth for this when I was 14. Because what I had to struggle with was a Jetson. Oh, God. Oh. Anybody of a certain age from the UK will know what I mean. Jetson, I think, were churned out by one of the same factories in Japan that made uh, some of the silver tone guitars and all the Sears Roebuck catalog stuff in, in the, uh, that, was, that was sold in the States. And they were horrible. They were being made by people who probably never even held a guitar. They'd only ever seen photographs. And they were just, I mean, oh, we, we used to joke miming tuning a Jetson by moving your arm forward, just, you know, to mimic the way the neck bent as you tune the damn thing. Um, anyhow, yeah, beginners today, you know never had it so good. Believe me, believe me. Being able to get something like this for 156 hours, which is, well, Compared to the cost of living in Australia, that was about the price of going out for dinner for three evenings and not eating particularly expensively. You know, it costs you five dollars for a coffee and ten dollars for a ten dollars for a sandwich, you know. Anyhow, what's it sound like? <laughs> not a lot really. There we go, neck pickup clean channel. That's the neck pickup. See, hear all that bass that isn't there. Neck and middle. Middle pickup. Middle and bridge. And the bridge. Oh, you could shave with that. Of course, it's got two controls, so you can wind some of that off. But pretty much goes from cheese slicing to mud in no time at all. I mean, I, I wouldn't say you couldn't gig with this. You might be able to twice. Little skinny little frets. I don't know how they'd hold up to constant play. Probably not very well at all. to myself I thought can I manage to set this wobby bar up to stay in tune using all the old all the old tricks we had to have back before the days of Floyd's and it ain't too bad he says as it goes out of tune okay well you complete the picture let's have some crunch tones there's the neck pickup Neck and middle, middle, middle and bridge, and the bridge. When I played that old Scorpions lick on the intro, I was using the solo channel on this because these pickups are really, really low output. <laughs> Squeer bullet. I'll see you tomorrow.